you are presenting a case of a complex superior sagittal sinus fistula that presented both a diagnostic challenge as well as an unusual treatment approach. The patient was a 60-year-old man with multiple medical problems who presented with his first seizure. His subsequent neurological exam was normal. Imaging investigation with MRI was remarkable for bilateral paramedian frontal centrum semivalli corona radiata increased signal on T2 and flare sequences. MRA and MRV images were remarkable for a paucity of filling of the posterior third of the superior sagittal sinus. The cortical veins appear proeminent and larger than what we would expect on both sides. Catheter angiography demonstrated on selected left external carotid injections opacification of the anterior third of the superior sagittal sinus with anterior drainage. Selective internal carotid artery injections demonstrated no arterial abnormality but a no noticeable lack of superior sagittal sinus opacification on the late venous faces. The posterior circulation showed an intact bilateral transverse sigmoid sinus system. The working diagnosis was seizure secondary to cortical venous sinus thrombosis and he was therefore discharged home on oral anticoagulant and levetiracetam. Unfortunately, he developed worsening seizures two weeks later and was readmitted. On exam, he had a left side weakness. Additional anticonvulsivant medication was required and a brain MRI showed enlargement of the areas of increased signal suggesting progressive injury from his previous venous sinus thrombosis. On repeat cerebroangiography, it was more apparent that the anterior superior sagittal sinus opacification from the external carotid branches were in fact early in comparison to the anterior ray flow in the internal carotid artery. It also became clearer that the external carotid branches were in fact enlarged, all indicating fistulization of the superior sagittal sinus, given his progressive worsening mental status, new neurologic deficit, continuous seizures on multiple medications, we decided to proceed with treatment. The treatment options were open surgery that would involve surgical disconnection of the venous sinus, or endovascular treatment that could be performed through a transarterial or a transvenous approach. Although surgical disconnection is a relatively simple procedure, the patient's comorbidities and need for anticoagulation for his history of uh, atrial fibrillation would put him at higher risk for surgical complications. We decided to proceed with endovascular treatment. We felt that the transarterial access would be very challenging given the multiple and small arterial feeders, so we opted for a transvenous access. Despite the potential complications related to superior sagittal sinus sacrifice, we felt that we were dealing with the decreased risk given the fact that the ICN injections demonstrated that the fistulized segment of the sinus was non-functioning and also that the venous system was probably compensated due to the baseline occlusion of the posterior portion of the sinus. Transvenous axis required passing through this occluded posterior superior sagittal sinus segment which seemed quite chronic given the degree of resistance encountered when trying to advance a wire through it. Eventually, a peripheral all-star wire was used and coiling catheter was then advanced to the fistulized sinus. Microcatheter runs confirmed proper positioning and coiling of the entire sinus was performed. At the conclusion of the procedure, on common carotid injections, there was no further early filling of the sinus. Here you can see the unsubtracted image of the final coil mass in the sinus. Fortunately, on the six month follow up, the patient has progressed quite favorably. He hasn't had any seizure and his anti seizure medications are being weaned off. Uh, he's neurologically intact and fully functional. In conclusion, this case illustrates the challenge of diagnosing an arterial venous fistula simultaneous with venous sinus thrombosis as well as the challenges associated with fistula embolization that may involve passing through an occluded sinus.